Welcome to Akhand Vidyashram, the first institute of impeccable wisdom. Today we are going to talk about gravity and its understanding. Did Isaac Newton invent gravity, discovered it in 1666 by seeing an apple falling down under the tree, apple tree? Or there is something much more than that we need to understand with respect to gravity? And as I have been saying very clearly, the wisdom of spiritual science was embedded in Vedas, Upanishads and ancient Indian scriptures to the core mathematically. And I'm glad I've been able to un unfold that and give the world deviant in the form which is perfect from every angle. As I've been saying, my dharma is impeccable wisdom, flawless, wisdom to the core that everything can be understood without any fault of any nature from biggest to smallest. And my greatest discovery is Deviank 22 by 21 to the power of 10.34419 equivalent to 1.6180. This is a mathematical design with which the perfect objects of the entire universe are created, are generated as one Brahma. R10 stages are mandatory operations of development, Vishnu. R.344, the third stage of dissolution and regeneration of Lord Shiva. Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh are the three stages of creation, not as the three independent gods, and I have shown that in the Tatriya 2. And 1.61 is the perfect, most approximal value of the divine golden ratio or the godly deviant ratio with which the perfect object and I've been showing that from day one, that even sodium and chloride pump is in the same ratio. DNA is in the same ratio. Female menstrual cycle is based on that. Almost every aspect of the human body, which is perfect, vital, the core, is with Divyank. And so is the solar system. So is spiral galaxy. So is the universe. And that's what I have been saying very clearly. And incidentally, yesterday was Guru Purnima, a day to devote to our Guru, the teachers. And maybe knowingly, unknowingly, the video which I put yesterday was to my Guru, Surya Adityan, son, and also to Aditi, the helium. The hydrogen and helium are the two elements which are very important which is the most important. The greatest is hydrogen, which I call Aditi, Aditya. And second is helium-4, which is Aditi, the mother, which is my voice of silence, my indwelling zone, called Kundalini or Antaratma. So to my Antaratma, which is my guru, and the physicalized body, and for the external world, it is Surya, Sun, and of course, higher. <clears throat> From that point of view, I am very, very clear. What I have learned was beautiful. But there was something again very significant happened yesterday. There were only three people who got in touch with me as, as if I am their guru. Of course, I always say I am only a teacher. I am not a guru. I am only sharing what I have conceived, experienced and thing, and I leave it at that. Anyway, they think, and they were the three people who were non brahmin by others, but they have created history by history in their own name, and I'm sure the third one will also. I'm not going to talk about at this particular junction. I would talk about three of them at the end and show what kind of history we created along with me, and that the world should know as far as spiritual science is concerned. Now, from that point of view, let's move on to the question of second stage, as I said, mathematically, it's a deviant. Structurally, functionally, symbolically, it's the Akhand. This particular single is a Virat Rupa of the entire universe. A to Z of every aspect of the human anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, psychology, at the individual level, solar system, spiral galaxy, Milky Way, our greater universe. All the aspects of what is there in Vedas, Upanishads, other things, are there in this particular symbol only. They are embedded. One symbol has complete wisdom, 
there is nothing in this universe which is not found in this particular symbol. It is also something which I have been explaining and showing one bit by bit in my own way and we will continue to do that for the rest of the journey. Now come to the question of when we think of gravity, the one thing which comes to my mind, we cannot understand gravity without understanding the unified field. Incidentally, this particular description is taken from my book, Akhand, in a sense of universal consciousness, which was published in 2002 itself, with the same symbol and mathematical design of 22 by 10 to the power of 10 only. At that stage, five digits of Shiva, I had no idea. And that is stage, I was just a student who was learning concepts of spiritual science from A to Z, one by one. Now, let me explain what I have written in the book, Akhand, an essence of universal consciousness, about unified field. Modern science is constantly trying to understand the universe. In the process, it has formulated different theories to explain the forces responsible for stability of our universe. Our universe is one. I have been saying again and again, whenever we are in distress and we are not able to find fault, our eyes immediately go toward the heaven or the cosmos. Why? Because there is continuity there, the uniformity, there is consistency, there is a bliss. And that is what we see. Things have not changed. But we are changing because we are not in tune with the universe. And similarly, modern science also has been trying to see that forces which are responsible for the stability of our universe. In the process, they have found the concept called the unified field theory. According to this theory, there are four different forces responsible for equanimity of our universe. This is a great contribution by the modern scientists. Let us give a credit to our modern scientists in the last four or five hundred years, what they have brought out. The first force which is very important is gravitational force or the gravity. This force attracts matter towards the planet. Or between two objects of matter, there is attraction and that is gravitational force. What is it this due to? Let us understand as we proceed. Second thing which is very important is electromagnetic force. The force is spread throughout the universe and is composed of two elementary forces, electric force and magnetic force. They can be electromagnetic two sides and magnetic can be stronger as well as weaker. And this is also science is explained to very clearly. I have learned that in physics from a school level till today is a beautiful from that point of view. Third force which is very important is a weak nuclear force which is responsible for electrons being fixed around the nucleus. There is a nucleus in an orbital stage of a element and there is an outer orbit which has got electrons. There is a force between electrons and the protons and neutrons on one side which is nucleus. There is a weak nuclear force as well as strong nuclear force. And strong nuclear force is responsible for neutrons and neutrons and protons being closely held together. Now, between electrons and the nucleus is weak force. Protons and neutrons are held together with a strong force. That's why they're more as a unit. That's what the core is into the nucleus and that two protons and neutrons inside. And electrons are outside. When electrons in an inert matter like helium-4 or neon or argon, when they are close to the nucleus, there will be darkness outside and light inside. That is also something which I have explained which is pure mathematical physics closely. Now let's move on to the next stage. Now comes to the question of gravity. What is the definition of gravity? An invisible force that pulls objects toward each other. There are different objects. They are trying to pull each other. That is the gravity. They are trying to attract each other. Earth gravity keeps you on the ground and make things fall down. And Earth has got a gravity which is equivalent to 1. And if anything which is thrown up will come down to the Earth and that's it. 
then animation of gravity is at work. And that is what Newton, Isaac Newton talked about gravity for the first time by observing the apple falling from apple tree down and he started the process. But Albert Einstein described gravity as a curve in space that wraps around an object such as star or a planet. His Einstein Newton was seeing, observing it falling but Albert Einstein said it is a curved space. So he is talking of curves and that is responsible for attraction. Both have their own meaning. I am not finding fault with that. I am giving them the credit as Isaac Newton himself gave the credit. He, all his knowledge is not his creation. It is based on what he has read in the books. So he is firing at the shoulders of other great people who have lived before him. And I think same thing holds good with Albert Einstein's. Albert Einstein's quantum physics is based on Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is based on earlier scientists. It's a continuous process of modern science, which I would call evolutionary process. They have not come to the truth which ancient Indian wisdom had come. That is something which I've been saying from the day one. Ved and Upanishad had mathematical designs and symbolic structures to the core which nobody can find fault with. But modern science is trying to figure it out to reach the truth which they have not reached. Because all their concepts are based on man-made formulas, mathematical formulas, not divine formulas which nature had designed. And Divyank is a divine design which is a perfect bit revealed for the first time in 2015 by me and I'm thankful it's a voice of silence which has helped me and over so many years of hard work I think it's come out very well. In the light of Deviant and Akhant we are going to see the beauty of ancient Indian symbols as well as mathematical designs and show the world what it is. Now when it comes to the question of physics if mathematics is a basic mathematical design but its reflection is physics and I still remember in school, I got 100 out of 100 in maths and 100 out of 100 in physics. Even in college, I got 100 out of 100 in maths as well as physics. They were my strengths because they're pure mathematical conclusions without any diversity. They talk of the truth of the highest order. And once you are in tune with universal current, you are going to get double distinction or centum by and large. This is the reality of my own life. Now, in physics, gravity is taking the word gravitas, which means weight. Mean gravity means things are falling down. It's a fundamental intention that causes natural attraction between all things that have mass. So now we are coming to question. Any object which has a mass is going to fall. And that is the weight. That is Latin is called new gravitas talking about. So gravity is for the weakest of the four fundamental interactions approximately 1038 times weaker than the strong interaction nuclear force 1360 times weaker than the electromagnetic force and 1020 times weaker than the weak interaction so we are talking of the unified field again one between electrons and the power nucleus and protons weaker section and strong and weaker nuclear section but what stands out in picture is 1036 times. That means we are talking of gravity associated with electrons. The force within electrons to the nucleus is 1000. So the weight of electron is 1036 times lesser than a protons and neutrons. That's a beauty which I want the world to understand why mathematics is important. That precise number again adds up to number 10 only. As a result, it has a significant influence at the level of stop atomic particles. And I'm also saying helium 4 is my antaratma, which is 4, 2 electrons, 2 protons, and 2 neutrons. Our hydrogen, which is 1 proton and 1 electron. And then subatomic particles are you have. 
full orbit, you have electrons, you have protons, you have neutrons, number one, at frontal layer, you have quarks and antiquarks, you have particles, antiparticles, and subparticles, which are divided into one into three. So this a proton which go up, a neutron which go down, are the beautiful signs, is observation which was observed by the ancient Indian Brahmins from the very beginning. So that is also something which I'm trying to bring it out that ancient Indians had already observed that there is one concept which is Nirankar, Nirgun, Brahman. But when it comes to Sakar, it's a Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, or Saraswati, Mahalakshmi, Mahakali. Three, Trinity. And when it goes further, it goes to all the gods and goddesses of God, which we find in Rigved, which is the first of the oldest one, which is the hats off to those people who have understood gods and goddesses, their qualities. And uh, Agni is a maximum and I put Agni as a fire element and that is the medium between the higher self and the lower self. And that I got is oxygen. And oxygen is the one gives fire. If oxygen is there, there is fire. If there is no oxygen, there is no fire. That's a reality again. And no wonder to start with Earth also add carbon dioxide. But now it's 21% oxygen only, which makes us keep alive. And second thing which is important is water. Without water, there wouldn't have been anything. So only Earth is an element or planet which has flowing water, which keeps a life dynamic. Without water, there is no life. This is what Vedas are talking about. They are not talking of anything other than water as an Amrit. Water is the one which is able to bring life to the way we see. That's the kind of beauty with Vedas are talking about which the Upanishads are talking about. They do not call anything other than Ambrosa, which is water, which came from top as Akash Ganga. And then what we have today is that. That's one part. Now coming to the next part, as I told you, the falling apple seen by Isaac Newton is the one which brought gravity into modern science. But gravity was known to Indians from the very beginning itself. It is not he who invented it. He brought this to awareness of the Western scientists. But Indian spiritual scientists knew that from Vedas itself, knew it from Upanishads itself, knew its description in detail much more before that. And that's what I keep saying. It was Akhand Bharat, which was Vishwaguru in every aspect. Akhand Bharat is a Vishwaguru today. And Akhand Bharat will continue to be Guru next time. But elements who will be the Vishwaguru would be the Brahmins, who understand Brahman, Paramatma completely. Every other person who is not in tune with universal consciousness, does not know Nirankar, Nirgun, Brahman, Asakar, Sarkun, Brahman, cannot be a Brahmin. You do not become Brahmin by birth. You become Brahmin by your thoughts, action and accomplishments. And only the one who understands Brahman becomes a Brahmin, not anybody else. This also a fact which I have been saying very clearly. Now, Isaac's gravity is the most significant interaction between object in the macrocosmic scale and it determines the motion of planets, stars, galaxies, even light. Everything is connected with gravity, you know. The first thought of this system of gravitation which he hit upon by observing an apple fall from a tree the event occurred in late summer of 1666. Some state that Newton had sitting in his garden at Wooten Manors and also he, when the event occurred. Some people give it Cambridge University. Anyway, it doesn't really matter where the apple tree was. The concept is there was an apple tree. You can see in the picture. You can see Isaac Newton. You can see the apple falling down. And that's what I have seen in the picture. There's the apple on top. There is a Newton's picture. There is the apple down. This is the same picture there. That is what is important, is the concept. Now, I come to the question of the gravity on Earth, which I call it equivalent to 1 G. And that is something which has to be understood. I am not going to go into detail of this, because it is a highly intellectual, scientific thing, beyond the reach of the people who are reading are listening to my video. They can read it if they are very much interested in this particular thing. But Isaac Newton gave the formula. That formula I would like to put it across here. The gravity force is equivalent to 
where terms F stands for gravity force between two objects and mean proportions to so G, G means gravity so it centers around gravity it forces between two objects so M1 represents the mass of one object M2 is of the two second object and R represents the distance between the objects the radius and that's formula you can calculate based on that gravity of earth is one gravity of moon is one sixth the value one sixth not exactly one it's one sixth and the sun is 28 g that is also something which i want to let the world know unless until we understand the gravity of earth gravity of moon and gravity of uh, sun because the three main elements as far as we are concerned and once they are understood this is so moon is one six of one earth is one and sun is 28 once that is realized i think we are on the strong path to understand the concept very clearly now comes to albert einstein took the further down as a curve you can see on the right side there are three pictures right picture and right on top is what the sun is a very simple curve the one dwarf thinks it goes down but other objects even further going down and there's a recess in between and this is a concept which is talked about it and this is also a concept which is responsible for black hole theory and black hole theory or conception again is verified with a formula created by Maharishi Srinivas Ramanujan only. Einstein has this a plate, but formula is given by him, and I call him Maharishi, and I call Newton also Maharishi, and so is Albert Einstein. They were the scientists. They came from Rishi Parampara of trying to understand concepts better. Not this, not this, not this. So based on their understanding, their level of consciousness, their level of knowledge, they could bring it down to the level which they have explained. Hats off to them. They laid a foundation based on which I am able to give Devyank with the kind of equipment today. Had it not been the kind of work done by Vedas, Upanishads, ancient inscriptions, and the modern science before Newton, Newton, Einstein, and other people of quantum physics, subnuclear particles, and then the kind of having equipments, computers, the kind of softwares I would have been able to do. Let me accept the fact, even for me and my Atma to reach that level, because we have the available knowledge, we have the concept, and we could do it. And same thing which I've been telling the world, enlightenment is the right knowledge, proper theoretical and the practical, which makes us to be in tune with the universal consciousness. It doesn't come from any other thing other than Akhand Vidya only. The first concept is understand concept A to Z. The enlightenment is not seeing light in the head. It's not at all as far as I'm concerned. For me, is the knowledge without fault, the impeccable wisdom which I'm talking about. I'm able to bring it down to that level. Once that information is known to everybody, from school, college to the university throughout the world, world will be a much better place. And that is what I've been talking about, Hita Upadesh, Vidya Dadati Vinyam, Vinyat Yati Patratam, Patratam Chidana, Dharam Sukham. If you want the world, we need to have the right knowledge or the impeccable wisdom, which I am working on. I have the uniformity of the entire world, taking modern science and spiritual science to the spiritual science level without any fault. This is an this is my contribution in the form of Akant as well as Devyank. In that light, I'm explaining that. So in that light, I would say all the scientists of the world, they, all the evolving, but they're bringing, finding fault with the earlier one and adding new thing. And that's where all the scientists stand, including, and I'm glad. Albert Einstein got a Nobel Prize 100 years ago. But his theory found to be deficient and three more scientists got Nobel Prize this year, last year to prove that this can be further. So I'm sure the modern science will grow to spiritual science level of Vedas and Upanishads over a period. And I think turning point is very clear with Vivek and Akhand. It's much easier to build on 
and reinvent the whole thing once again. And I'm that's the reason why I'm talking about each concept and what they did and what it is, so that we have lay the foundation for much better empirical wisdom as we move on. Now let's move on to the next stage. This particular picture everybody has seen, and I'm sure way back in 1975, I had the pleasure of reading the Tao of Physics. Tao means father of physics, and the picture centered around Chinese concept, because the word is Chinese. Tao is Chinese, it's not an Indian. And he had brought the picture of yin and yang at that particular stage to start with. But he also had a picture of Nataraja and showing all the nuclear physics, the dynamic with which it works, is this particular picture or not. But he only talked about vibrations which come from different parts. But today in CERN, NASA and all the scientific worlds of the world, this particular statue stands out. But what I am here to show you something which I have never seen anybody explaining till date. This statue is not a figure. It is not of electrons moving. There is much more deeper impeccable wisdom in this. And this is there in Tanjore Temple, Dakshin Bharat, to Tamil Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva has come from Kailash to Amanath, to Tanjur, and we have Akhand Bharat from Kashmir to Kanyakumari as one unit, and we are both exponents of ancient Indian wisdom. And in this picture, symbolic representation, I'm going to show you something which I'm sure is going to be surprising for everybody. The picture on top, I have put an orbital structure of argon. In that you can see there are protons, neutrons in the middle. Then you have the first orbit, which has got two electrons. Then second has got eight. Third has got eight. So two plus eight plus eight is 18, is a number which is talking about, and that is what Adi Prashakti, which I'm going to show you next one. But in this particular picture, if you see, there is one light on top, which I will call evolution. Right at the bottom, that light, you see a demon. Is a second light, hand which take his, his hand is taking divine energy, and with hand he is killing all the negativity within himself, or negativities in the world, and that is dharma all about. These are the two electrons of the inner circle. Now you see the left side. You have eight, and you have eight on the right side. Is it a coincidence? No. But this is what it is all about. Similarly, you see the Shiva dancing, one hand which is coming up, one hand going down. And then you see the hair. And in both the sides you see five and five. You don't see any other number. You are not seeing four or six or any other number. Five plus five are the Panchabutas we are talking about. The person who would have designed this particular symbol must have been knowing very well there are 10 stages of development. And finally, we have to go to four hands. That is helium four. That means he represents Adi Prashakti or Argat and also goddesses Gayatri, Saraswati, Savitri, and also you can call it Aditi. You are going to show you those pictures. So I'm sure you would have been surprised actually symbolic represents the organ itself. That is how the structure was found in this, was the thousand and thousand years back in Dakshin Bharat, in Tamil itself. And incidentally, now let's move on to the north. I, this is a picture of Adi Prashakti. In this picture also you can see 18 arms only. If that one hand is taking for divinity, one hand is killing this, then you have eight on either side to prove that is it. So Adi Prakshakti was again Argan. That is something which I have been saying. It's a symbolic representation. Ancient Indian Brahmins were expert in mathematics, divine mathematics. They also knew very well how to convert divine mathematics in symbolic form, yantra form. And I have shown that over and over. 
if you are in tune with universal consciousness, you can see the pattern in whatever thing. And then I have been able to pick and choose the one which perfect. I am not taking the thing which people have made it imitating without understanding. So I want people to understand the concept and see the mathematics and these symbols and see in the light of modern science and then wisdom which is impeccable wisdom. That's me. Next same thing when I come back to, to where I was born. I was born in Jammu and Kashmir. So Jammu and Kashmir is known for something called Spantan Krika. It's a book written with Kashmir Shaivism. And this is a graphic representation. In this particular picture, you can see five heads of Lord Shiva, Panchabhutas. And then you see ten arms. And also you see a lotus flower. Is it a coincidence? It is the same thing there in this form, which is amazing in the whole self. That is the beauty at one part. So Kashmir Spandan, which is again viruses, which is spirals, which is all Kundalini chakras, nadis, which flow in nadis, flow in there. And that is what modern science or Einstein is talking about curves, because they are all shapes and curves. That's beauty. Now, ancient, we had known it. We gave it a different form. It's unfortunate that our impeccable wisdom of Vedas and Upanishads of scriptures has not been given importance and nobody has tried to understand and implement in day-to-day -day life and take modern science to spiritual science the level which I am trying to do. We are laying a foundation for impeccable wisdom. So, see, if we want the answers in modern science to take it to the level, we need to go back to ancient in scriptures of Vedas and Upanishads and other scriptures and then modern science will have impeccable wisdom. That work for the first time, bringing spirituality and science together is being done by me and I'm happy that I'm laying a foundation, very strong foundation for the world to see impeccable wisdom. Now let's go to the next day. And same reflection is seen in this particular picture of Gayatri. You have five heads, you have ten arms, and you have same lotus flower. It is same Spandar Kriya. That is same Shiva. And Shiva is talking about Surya. As I told you, my guru is Surya. And Gayatri also represents Gayatri Mantra. And Gayatri Mantra, Akhand Gayatri Mantra has got the same Divyank only. And Maha Gayatri Mantra has uh, this particular concept. So again, this symbolic representation, this was designed by me, redesigned by me, keeping a cut in mind way back in 1997 itself. Now, I'm going to give another picture which I had designed in 1992, which made me understand the core value of Deviank. In this particular picture, represent Deviank as such. But there are two concepts in Divyank is one is the core, another is dynamic. When I talk of core, I talk of Shiv. So Shiv is the core, which is 38.1966% and Shakti is 61.8034%. This was done by me in 1992. I did not know what exactly was being done, but I've done that. But what is I understand in this particular thing is you have a Shakti with a Shakti face, not a Shiva face. The concept in this is more of 61 point is female and 38 point that. So mean core is this much, Devanayam is this much, this picture. But there is something much more important in this picture is, normally when you see Ganga coming of the head of Lord Shiva is always toward right, one's left side of his rim. But here I have put it on the left side. This only thing I understand, Sindhu, which starts from Mans Rover in Kalash, flows towards the west, which is the outer boundary of Akhand Bharat on one side, and of course Himalayas on the eastern side, and west is Sindhu. But Ganga, which comes from, is from Vishuddhi Chakra, not from the head. That's why it comes somewhere in Uttaranchal, Gangotri, and it gives the Amrit which the world needs it. That's the real beauty of it. That is something which I now understand key this symbolic representation is very, very powerful. Now in the picture you can see Nandi, you can also see the mountain, you can see the water A to Z. That is, that is something which I want the world to understand. 
कि प्लीज डोंट डी ग्रेट दिस आइडल वर्शिप आइडल वर्शिप वॉज नॉट इमेजिनरी मैन मेड फिक्शन दे आर फुल ऑफ विजडम एंड दैट इज अजडम and unless until mathematical design is converted into graphic forms you cannot understand mathematics at all so audio visual has to have visual component and audio component and mathematical design in the symbolic form is right that's where divyank and akhand stand out and all these pictures are reflection from that to see when you go into the lower level of execution now goddess Gayatri, as I told you, this particular picture is a neon 21, from which solar system, our spiral galaxy, our Milky Way has come from. Whereas from Gayatri is the greater universe, and here you have 10.34419 spiral zero. And world has been talking of different aspects with which the universe is concerned, and one of them is string theory. and when they talk of string theory they talk of 11 but i make it clear it is not 11 is 10.34419 alone and once that is understood we'll understand gayatri better we'll understand the spiral galaxy better we'll understand creativity better that's one part now moving on to begin the next stage if uh, uh, adi prashakti is one mata one goddess Gayatri is the second goddess. Third god is Aditi, which is formed in sun from hydrogen to helium, helium to four, and that is structure which is two. In God, in this particular picture, Aditi, you can see only two hands. One from divine energy and one goes down. It's not a coincidence, but is the reality by and large. Now. as i have shown this earlier in my last video and i'm showing again the sun and mother earth has also got a concept that approximate distance between sun and earth 150 the diameter of sun is 1.319 million kilometers when that is divides 150 million by that number you get 108 what it means is between earth and sun 108 suns can easily fit in that's the beauty of it but at the same time the diameter of earth and diameter of sun is also 108 that's also something which i have already explained and that's what you're going to see in this particular picture that is sun and the 108 is a beautiful mathematical description which is par excellence in any way that is the divine design and that is what panchabhuta is pentagon there are five angle and each one is 108 and power of that is 540 is it a coincidence no this is a divine design if it is divine design nothing will fall out of this place and that is what i am trying to say divyank and all the symbolic representation you can see on either side of my thing are designed with that only now the comes the question of mother earth and moon this is also concept which i'll be talking much more detail but here diameter of moon is 3478.9 or 3479 and distance between earth and earth is 3384400 km if you take this 384400 divide by 3479 you get a number of 108 is it also coincidence even between moon and earth you have the same ratio 108 moons can fit within earth and moon that's amazing sun between sun and earth between earth and moon it is a moon so that's why ida and pingala moon and sun play a very important role to the shushuna which is earth and i think once we are able to understand that Ida Pingala Nadi, which is from Kundalini Yoga, and this particular concept and that mathematical design, if you can bring it down to this level of understanding, I can assure you, you have impeccable wisdom to the core, and you can apply that, and you will never fall sick. You will never be short of energy. You will be full of dynamism. The kind of thing single-handedly you can do. I am 73. All these things A to Z is done by me alone. 
and all this the uh, dictation which i'm talking about is non-stop without any editing perfectly from my memory i'm not reading for anything this is just for the information much more but actually it is my my atma which is speaking about and that is the kind of impeccable wisdom which i want the world to have it now all this information which i have given about gravity and other concepts from a to z is there in this particular thing alone now at this particular juncture having explained a to z about the gravity what were the knowledge in kashmir in kirika spandan kirika in the north and statue of nataraja dancing in south and of course agastya and other concepts on one side and also the knowledge of veda upanishads of ancient indian wisdom its mathematics on one side and all the modern science their evolutionary process to improve from non existence a zero point to a stage where isaac newton could see apple falling down and then brought uh, gravity into the force in the modern science is concerned then isaac new uh, albert einstein took it to the curvature part of it added new dimension and what i have then is taken you to third level with divine can think which proves valid that is one part in the beginning i said yesterday was guru purnima and only three students are three people who are connected with me wished me as a guru but i know i am only a teacher i am not a guru so i don't encourage anybody to call me guru i don't promote myself because i am only learning more and more day by day i like a modern science i am also evolving the process i am not the one who says i know everything i have come of everything everything known to me no we are all students let us be student then let us be honest and do our job to the best of my ability so from that point of view let me talk about the three people who wished me in a very subtle way as a guru you can call it as a progress you call it let's not go into the detail first message which i got in the early morning from my student who incidentally was my phd guide first phd guide in chetnad university his name is prasan priya naik and i can tell you he came to me by default when everybody else failed to guide him they found he will not be able to help him for whatever reason poor fellow had difficulty and he and i joined chetnad at the stage when he was already from 2008 batch but when i joined when everybody said no then he came to me sir can you be my guide i said fantastic we will do it i agreed to be his guide as the first candidate and first successful candidate of that university was his first synopsis given by him first thesis given by him and the process i can tell you in the modern science part his topic was effect of oxidative and antioxidative or pro oxidative antioxidant effect of maybe vitamin e alcohol on aluminium based deficiencies and neurological that was phenomenal work we produced nine research articles out of his phd work and all the nine articles are found in my google scholar and all have been cited and out of that six are in scopus itself so we created a history for the world no university's first candidate in the world would be a successful within the shortest time produce nine research articles all are cited and skip the scopus it is not possible for any first candidate any university anywhere in the world we created a history that is between me and him no wonder he still think he makes it but for him but for my guidance and show him how to bring the best out of him he has to and i made it very clear it is your baby not my baby i am only going to make sure that you don't make the mistakes which are not acceptable and that is same thing holds good to me and my guide my now my phd work was only my work guide was only to tell me whether it's right or wrong no wonder my guide professor a namachan greatest scientist said my whole work is done by me from one to last 
and done with it. And second student was a student who was MSc to PhD level. And third, I have never even seen. And that's it. I think I should leave that. Thank you very much.